Hello, I'm Rob, a Washington DC tour guide. It's game day and I'm gonna jump around to the other side of the camera and take you on a little tour of the neighborhood around Nationals Park. All right, let's go ahead and head out of the Metro station. This is the Navy Yard ballpark station and this is the half street exit. So follow the signs for the ballpark and you'll wind up over here. Make sure to have your smart trip card ready when you're exiting. You can use either a plastic smart trip card or smart trip on your phone. I have a few videos about how to ride Metro and how to use smart trip if you want to check those out. So here we are on half street. This is the way that most people who are attending the game will exit the Metro and get to the game. Right here on the left, we've got and pizza, one of my favorite cheap eats in the city. I don't go there quite as much as I used to. I found some other places I like more, but and pizza, always a solid place to go for a bite. Buffalo Wild Wings over here on the left, big chain of course. I suppose if you're going to build uh, B-dubs in DC, putting it right next to a ballpark or a stadium or an arena is kind of the obvious choice. So can't really say anything about Buffalo Wild Wings that you probably don't already know. Compass Coffee straight up ahead. And just want to point out the bullpen. The bullpen has been here for a long time, about as long as Nationals Park has existed. It's definitely got a bit of a party atmosphere, not a place I would go if I had kids in tow. But if you're young, if you want to get some beers before the game or during or after the game, uh, the bullpen, kind of a classic spot to go ahead and do that. We've got Cold Stone Creamery up here on the right. This is Half Street, by the way, so Half Street Southeast. And it is closed to traffic on game days. So it is pedestrianized on game days. Uh, I've got a few other ice cream places in the neighborhood I'll tell you about as I make my way past them. This is Atlas Brew Works uh, coming up next. It is a local brewery. I do quite like their beers. I was part of their beer club one year, got to taste a whole bunch of them. And the beer is quite good. The food is excellent. They have Andy's Pizza as their in-house restaurant. So if you watched my collaboration video with The Megan Daily, where we tasted New York City foods in DC, we went to Andy's Pizza and it was good enough to impress a New Yorker. Brand new spot here is Duke's Grocery. It is not a grocery store. It's a bar slash restaurant. And it just opened. I actually haven't even been to this location before. Many people think that Duke's, the original DuPont location, has one of the best burgers in DC. So we'll see if this one does too. Baseball, baseball ramen spot up here next on the right. Uh, pretty good ramen, but definitely the best name for a restaurant in the neighborhood, if I may say. We've got Silver Diner on the other side of the street. And right up above it is Silver Social. So diner style food. I am quite grateful that a silver diner opened up in the city. They historically have been mostly in the suburbs in Maryland and Virginia, but it's good to have a, a breakfast spot in town and not just brunch spots. Most places are brunch. They don't open until 10 or 11 on the weekend. So silver diner opens early. The center field gate is right here up ahead and to the left. And that is where most people will enter when they're attending the game. This is N Street here, N is in Nancy, but I just want to take a quick peek around the corner because there's several spots on this little block here that I wanted to point out. So directly to my right is a restaurant called Gatsby, excellent uh, sit down type restaurant. Right next door, straight ahead uh, is Royal Sands and it is a Florida themed restaurant. Yes, a uh, restaurant bar themed like Florida. I've been to it, it's fun. I don't know if I would go there late night, definitely uh, more my vibe earlier in the day. And then past that, there's Mission, which is a Mexican restaurant, and there's Walter's Sports Bar, which is, in my opinion, one of the better sports-specific bars in the city. So there's lots of, you know, quote-unquote sports bars in every destination in every city, but Walter's, I think, is pretty good. And it's a spot where people go before baseball games, before soccer games. Let's get one last quick peek down Half Street here. Watch everyone coming in to the game from the Metro. Silver Diner, like I said, is diner style food, uh, breakfast all day sort of deal, and then uh, burgers, sandwiches, anything you could expect to find at a diner, you'll find at Silver Diner. Next up is Tap 99, which is a pour your own beer type place. Not just beer, they also have cider, they have wine, they have mixed drinks, cocktails. Uh, and I actually had, before Tap 99 opened, had been to some of the 
pour your own type places in other cities and I didn't really like them to be honest so I was not expecting to really like tap 99 but I went when it opened and it's quite good it's it's quite nice and the prices are fairly reasonable for what it is they have decent happy hour prices as well this is a new spot here this is called chicken and whiskey uh, it sells exactly what the name of the place implies chicken and whiskey Peruvian chicken specifically I actually haven't been to this yet, but every time I walk past, including right now, it smells so delicious. So they're definitely luring you in with the amazing aromas that waft through the air. Next up is Takoda. It's actually above the TD Bank right here. You can't really see it from the ground, but up on the roof there is this bar called Takoda. Another spot that I feel like I'm probably a little old, too old for, and so definitely has a younger vibe, more exciting vibe. Uh, if you come here on the weekend, you'll find it's pretty lively. Um, I mean, it's lively all the time, but definitely on like a Saturday afternoon slash evening. Next to the bank, we have the Hampton Inn. And on top of the Hampton Inn on the rooftop is one of the few rooftop bar slash restaurants in the city that has a view into Nationals Park. I've been up there several times. It's quite a nice view. However, it's not like Wrigley Field. It's not like the spot across the street from Wrigley Field where you can actually buy a ticket to sit up there and then watch an entire game. I think like half the outfield is blocked from the top of the Hampton Inn, but it's kind of a cool experience if you are looking for something a little bit different. Next up next to this apartment building with the blue sign is Swizzler. Swizzler is hamburgers, hot dogs. It's actually one of my favorite hamburgers uh, slash cheeseburgers slash burgers in DC. They also added a chicken sandwich. It's in my favorite Cheap Eats video. Chopped is a salad spot in the salad realm. People have strong opinions about whether they prefer chopped or sweet green. And Chipotle, what can you say about Chipotle? Everybody knows what it is. That's right next door as well. This vacant spot right here with the green trim used to be Roti. I used to love Roti. It's really kind of unfortunate that this location closed uh, and it hasn't been replaced yet. And Rasa. Rasa is Indian food. It is more of a modern Indian. So I heard the owners giving an interview where they said, you know, when they were growing up, you'd go to Indian restaurants and there'd be white tablecloths and Taj Mahals hanging on the walls. And it wasn't a very inviting experience if you weren't used to that, so they wanted a more inviting Indian restaurant. Somewhere is a clothing clothing store slash coffee shop. Hard to explain, you gotta check it out for yourself to experience it. And Green Turtle, a another sports bar. I don't particularly love the Green Turtle. I much prefer Walter's Sports Bar if I'm going to uh, go to a sports bar. But I believe Green Turtle is the official restaurant for the Residence Inn, which is right here. And so just on this street, we've got two hotels. We've got the Hampton Inn, we've got the Residence Inn. I have been inside both. They're both quite nice, so de decent choices if you're looking for a place in the neighborhood to stay. Next up on the left is El Bebe, El Bebe, sorry, I can't pronounce that, another Mexican spot, and Circa, which is a popular brunch spot. Brunch, um, American food, I suppose you could say. So if you're looking for a lunch, it's a, it's a good one, a good choice. And let me tell you about today, the day I'm out here. It's Sunday, May 14th. It's Mother's Day, and so that's why I think some of the brunch spots are a little bit more lively than usual. Uh, just down this block of M Street, I'm not gonna walk down the block, but there's a few spots that you can go to over here. There's Shake Shack, which is a classic. There's Kava, which is one of my personal favorites, and they are both excellent choices. And then on the opposite corner here of First and M Southeast is Pink Taco. You can kind of see it in the sign there. Uh, on the corner, Pink Taco, another taco spot. It's a big chain. I think they're from Miami or someplace like that. I actually haven't been to it yet. Uh, it's not at the top of my list of places to go. It replaced a brewery called Gordon Biersch, which is a chain brewery. You might have one in your city. There's Gordon Biersch places all over the place. And so I, you know, had been to Gordon Biersch. It's fine. I much prefer Atlas Brewworks now if I'm going to go to a brewery type spot, but Pink Taco is what replaced it. So like I said, it's Mother's Day. The Nationals are actually playing a double header today against the Mets. And I just wanted to say that because it's only 12-10 right now. The typical Sunday schedule has games starting at 
However, because uh, yesterday's game was rained out, they did not play yesterday. They rescheduled for a doubleheader today. And so the first game was moved up from 1.30 to 12.30. And the second game will be played, I believe, at 4 or 4.30. So that is why I'm out a little bit earlier. If you're watching this and you're thinking, wow, there doesn't seem to be too many people around for pre-game, uh, it's possibly because the earlier start kind of messed up a lot of people's schedules, their plans. If you were planning to get here at 1 o'clock or 1.30 for the game, now the game's starting an hour earlier, you might not be getting here quite as early. So that's what I wanted to point out there. Uh, across the way, across M Street, is the New Jersey Avenue exit for Metro. So I took the Half Street exit. That is the exit that most people attending a game will take, but obviously, as you can see, quite a few fans have exited at the New Jersey Avenue station as well. You can use either when you come for the game. Just know that if you use the New Jersey Avenue station, it's a bit of a longer walk to get to the ballpark. And maybe you wanna use this exit because you wanna eat at one of the places on First Street that I just walked past, and that's a perfectly good reason to use it or you just wanna avoid some of the crowds and don't mind a little bit longer walk, that's perfectly valid too. So let's actually talk about getting to a game because I took Metro to get over here. I would say that most baseball fans, attendees will take Metro and that's a good thing because Nationals Park can seat, I believe around 40,000 people and there are definitely not 40,000 parking spaces around here. And so the more people who take Metro, the better the experience is for everyone. You can drive, and I'll get to that in a moment, but Metro for most people is going to be the best option. If you are coming to DC, you're visiting from out of town and planning to attend a game or games plural, then staying at a hotel in the area and just walking is a good choice. So I already passed two hotels the Hampton Inn and the Residence Inn. And right next to the Shake Shack that I pointed out from a distance a few minutes ago is the Homewood Suites. So there are lots of hotel choices. And straight up ahead and a little bit to the right is another newish hotel called the Thompson Hotel. And it's definitely the highest end hotel in the neighborhood right now anyway, but it's just right there. So another good option for hotels in the neighborhood. Now this building straight ahead, this is currently a vacant building. It's been vacant for years, years and years and years. It's never been rented. It just got purchased by a new owner. They're trying to rent it out. There was an article in one of the local business newspapers about how the new owner, they really want a, I think their quote was something like a high value client and they name dropped Apple. They seem to really, really want Apple to build an Apple store there probably knowing that Apple pays high rent for all their stores. But they also kind of name dropped, well, you know, maybe Tesla would like to have a showroom here or Rivian, which is another electric car company. And that's because on the left, this building on the left is the US Department of Transportation headquarters. And so the logic goes, okay, well, if you're an electric car company and you wanna have some influence with the people who work in the transportation department, what a great spot for a little showroom right there. I really hope it's not something like that. I really hope it's something else, but that definitely is something that was dropped in that article. Now this little spot that I'm walking on here, this is called Transportation Walk. It's kind of like a little mini outdoor museum exhibit type thing. My guest Jennifer actually mentioned it in the episode of the Trip Hacks DC podcast about tips for visiting DC with kids. She mentioned this as one of her favorite kind of quote unquote hidden gems in DC that you can bring kids to. And there's some fun stuff that they can look at. It is really not a big exhibit. So don't come here expecting you're gonna spend an hour looking at things. This is not a full blown museum. This is just a little little exhibit outside the transportation department headquarters. And it actually, this we've only seen half of it so far. The other half of it is on the opposite side of the street here, but I'm actually not going to walk down there because I wanna show you some of the businesses on the other side of the street. So yeah, like I said, you can stay at a hotel in the neighborhood and walk. You can take the circulator bus. There's a circulator bus that runs between LaFont Plaza and Eastern Market, and you can bike. There's several bike share stations in the neighborhood. You can ride your own bike. Uh, Nationals Park is one of the f few parks that has a dedicated bike valet. I'll actually pop up a 
a photo of it on screen right now. It's not a valet, like a car valet, where someone actually takes your bike and takes it off someplace and parks it. It's basically just like a big room with a bunch of bike racks and somebody who watches over it during the game. And I've, I've used it many times. It's, it's great, a great amenity to have if you live here and have your own bike. Uh, now over here on the left, this is Stadium Sports Bar. I forget, it It used to be called something else, something barbecue restaurant. I do believe they still specialize in barbecue. Uh, and so another sports bar, Walter's again is my personal favorite in the neighborhood, but they do have some good specials over there. Occasionally I walk past and see the sign and looks like they have a happy hour and some, some specials. We've got a Lululemon up here on the left. Not really much to say about that. If you're looking for some workout gear, that is one of the spots where you can stop and buy that. And next door is Nando's. Nando's is grilled chicken. And I quite like Nando's. It is a very solid fast food type uh, place. It's chicken, so it's exclusively chicken, I should say. And they have some other items as well, but very good. And next we have Hatoba, which is a Hawaiian restaurant. It originally started as a ramen restaurant, but they've switched to Hawaiian, but they also have ramen, so it's kind of a Hawaiian ramen hybrid. And Blue Jacket. Blue Jacket, I, I believe they've been here, it's got to be about a solid decade now. If not, it's got to be getting close to it, a solid decade. When Blue Jacket opened, it was a huge deal because the owners of Blue Jacket, they own several pretty popular bars in town. And one of them was Church Key and Birch and Barley, which is over on 14th Street, uh, over on the other side of town. And so people were really, really excited when Blue Jacket was open, opening, and it's still really popular. Uh, two spots I want to point out right here. We've got Takarian, Korean tacos, one of my favorites, and Sweet Green. Hopefully you know Sweet Green. It's salad. So we've got both salads in the neighborhood. In the Salad Wars, we've got Chopped and Sweet Green. And if you prefer one, you can go to one. If you prefer the other, or if you're traveling with a group where some people prefer chopped and some people prefer, prefer sweet green, you can get them both. Straight up ahead is Emmy Squared, which is pizza, specifically Detroit style pizza. So Detroit style pizza is defined as a pan pizza. It's in a square or a rectangular pan. And the story goes that in Detroit, they would use these square pans to hold parts in the factories, in the industrial areas, and somebody made a pizza out of them. Down this block, we have La Famosa on the end, Puerto Rican food, and next door to Jenny's, very, very popular ice cream spot. So that's our second ice cream spot. There's one more, which is my favorite. I'll show you uh, coming up soon. Across the way on the right is a restaurant called Chloe. It is a pretty fancy restaurant, you know, not super expensive, but a, a nice little splurge if you are looking for something good to splurge on. And I've been to it before. It's very delicious. It has won some awards. I don't know if it won um, any big awards this year, but it's definitely very, very good, very solid uh, in any case. And then on the left here, we have a new-ish bar called Trouble Bird. It used to be called something else, uh, Maxwell Park, which was like a wine bar, and they renamed, rebranded, now it's Trouble Bird. I haven't been to the renamed place yet, but Maxwell Park, they were kind of known for having these extravagant Christmas light um, exhibits around the holidays. On the left, we just passed what used to be Yellow the Cafe. It's now gone. They've moved Yellow the Cafe to other uh, spots in town, and Albi which is a Michelin star award-winning restaurant, one of my personal favorite restaurants in DC. It is Middle Eastern food, I believe Palestinian specifically, could be wrong about that, but it is so good. I've had, I don't know if I've had many meals in DC that were quite as good as, as that one, but you've really gotta be into that kind of food or be willing to take an adventure on something new if you go ahead and try Albi. But yeah, one of my personal favorites. So we're going down Water Street now, and we're about to go into the Yards Park, which I'll tell you all about in a few moments. But first, up here on the right is Schilling Canning Company, another solid weekend spot if you're looking for brunch or looking for dinner. Uh, I've been there. Food is very, very good, very, very solid. So Schilling Canning Company right over there. And then the next one down 
is not a restaurant. It's actually a store. It's called Steadfast Supply. So Steadfast Supply sells locally made gifts, small items. You can get uh, cards. You can get shirts. You can get clothes. You can get plants. And it's all you know local and maybe not exclusively local, but a lot of it is local and just cool artisanal stuff. It's similar to the shop Made in DC store, which sells similar items, and I like both. So right next to that is a Thai restaurant, and across the way is a barbecue restaurant, and uh, up on the corner where I'm going to cross right here is, uh, the barbecue restaurant is called Do South, by the way, um, and then next to it is my favorite ice cream, which is Ice Cream Jubilee which is the one with the rainbow in the window right here. And if you come here in the summer, if you come here on a hot July day, you're gonna be waiting in line. This place gets a line. It's May, it is a beautiful 75 degrees out here right now, and it's still relatively early. So the line, I, looked, I peeked inside, it was fairly short. But just know, if you come here in the summer and it's a hot day, you're probably gonna wait, but it'll be worth it. You can come off season if you want to get a break in the line. District Winery right up ahead. Uh, yes, it is a winery. They make wine in-house. If you go inside the building, you can actually see, or you can even see it from the outside if you go around at the other side, the tanks and the barrels where they ferment the wine. Uh, they do not grow the grapes here, so they bring in the grapes from elsewhere. I'm actually not sure where they bring them in from, but I'm sure if you take the tour, they'll tell you all about where they source the grapes from. So District Winery, it is also... Uh, a wedding venue. So if you come here on a weekend, chances are you're going to see a wedding party nearby. It's it's Sunday morning, so I didn't see one today, but yesterday was Saturday. So we are in the peak of spring wedding season here in D.C. Marini uh, is an Italian restaurant. I have been there many times. They used to do, and they may still do, during the off season in the winter, they would do uh, $10 pasta Mondays, which I think turned into $12 pasta Mondays, which turned into $15 pasta Mondays, but I've eaten many of those pasta Monday specials. And Bammy's, which is a Caribbean restaurant here, next to Agua 301, and the address of Agua 301 is 301 Water Street Southeast, so you can put two and two together and figure out how they named the restaurant. And this is actually the outdoor space for Bammy's. So Bammy's is a Caribbean restaurant. They also do drinks and cocktails uh, out here on the patio. It used to be another restaurant called Whaley's, which was a seafood restaurant. And the, I used to go there to get the dollar oysters. They had dollar oysters during happy hour. And man, they were fresh and they were good. This little bridge here. So we've now squarely made it into the Yards Park, one of in my opinion, the best parks in all of Washington, D.C. And this little bridge here is one of the most Instagrammable spots in the park. Unfortunately, the water is not turned on. This is normally a kid's pool, and there's a splash park on the other end. For whatever reason, it's not turned on yet. It is only mid-May, so it's still somewhat early in the season. I do hope they get that turned on soon, because when it gets hot uh, in June, July, this is an extremely popular spot for families, for kids, and I expect uh, it will be this year as well if it's hot. So like I said, this is one of the most Instagrammable spots. I know people don't post photos on Instagram quite as much as they used to. Now Instagram is all videos and reels and other things, but back when it was primarily a photo app, you would frequently see someone dressed up with a professional photographer posing on or near this bridge. Definitely one of those kind of spots. Uh, so this lawn over here on the right, this is where they had a lot of the big events for Pedal Palooza this year and last year. So I did a live stream of Pedal Palooza if you're curious about checking out what it is and what it looks like. And it's one of the signature events from the National Cherry Blossom Festival. So Pedal Palooza is a fun one. It's just a big celebration of spring. They used to have it at the wharf. The wharf just didn't have enough space. And so last year they moved it over here and there's a lot more space over here. So good choice in my opinion by the National Cherry Blossom Festival. This boardwalk here will take you from the Yards Park over to Nationals Park. So if you come for a game and you want to eat at one of those restaurants over there first before the game, you can do that and then you can make your way 
over the boardwalk to the park. This building right here is the DC Water Headquarters. So yes, the water company, this is their headquarters building. It's a pretty new building. It was built on top of the O Street pumping station. Uh, it is an office building, so it is not a treatment plant. It's got really interesting architecture that I'm not really qualified to tell you about, but it's one of the first buildings in the city, if not, you know, in a larger area, to use a wastewater recapture system, which if you go, you can learn all about. It's quite fascinating. But it uses, basically it uses heat from your flushes to create heat in the winter, and in the summer it works as a giant heat sink, and so it helps cool the building down. So, like I said, this is not the main treatment plant. That would be what's called Blue Plains, which is in another part of town that almost no tourists will ever go to because it's fairly industrial part of town with a big water treatment plant, so no reason to go over there, but that is where that is. So we're leaving the Yards Park, but the Yards Park, like I said, is one of my personal favorite parks in DC. I think it's an excellent place to hang out. They have concerts on Fridays. They are gonna do the Friday Night Concert Series again this summer. Uh, oh, it is in the summer, of course. They have special events throughout the year, like Petalpalooza and other things. The park officially opened in 2010, so it's now, I guess, 13 years old, although it was under construction for a while. So even though it officially opened in 2010, it didn't really fully feel open until probably closer to 2014-ish. And they're still adding onto it and changing it and improving it, so it always feels like a work in progress. Now over here on the left is what will become the Ballpark Boathouse. So this little area here is called Diamond Teague Park. And the Ballpark Boathouse is one of several boathouses in the city where you can go to rent a kayak, a canoe, um, other types of water equipment and go out on the water and paddle around. And I actually personally prefer the Ballpark Boathouse over the others for the reason that the probably the most popular boathouse in DC is the Key Bridge Boathouse, which is in Georgetown, directly below the Key Bridge, which connects Georgetown to Arlington. And that's a really popular boathouse. And then the Wharf also has a boathouse, and that one's pretty popular as well. But both of those, the disadvantage is that they're in much busier waterways. So if you are not a confident kayaker, and I am not a particularly confident kayaker, it feels like you're competing with a lot of water traffic, with bigger boats, with other kayaks. And so the ballpark boathouse over here on the Anacostia River is just got much more chill vibes. And so much more my style. They typically have a shorter season though. So ballpark boathouse is typically only open from Memorial Day through Labor Day-ish. And so it's not, we're still several weeks away from Memorial Day on the day I'm recording this. So they're not quite open yet. Uh, I just want to stop here and point out that Nationals Park has many entrances. The Centerfield Gate is the one that probably the vast majority of people will use because it's closest to the metro. But if you're not coming from metro or you want to go hang out to a, you know, eat, drink before the game, you can use any entrance. And sometimes the ones like the one I just showed you have much shorter lines. This is Dacha or Daca. Not quite sure how to pronounce that. I am terrible with pronunciations again. I apologize for that and it is a outdoor beer garden. They've built this up over the years to be a pretty nice beer garden. So I am kind of a sucker for a beer garden. My personal favorite is called the Brig. It is not uh, on this walking route. It's in the opposite direction. If we had kept going past um, where I stopped by the Sweet Green and the Taqueria, and if we had kept going down, we could eventually get to it. But I decided to turn back around to come show you the ballpark. And this is Salt Line. This is, I guess I would describe Salt Line as a seafood restaurant, but it's got a lot of different things. And this outdoor space is just a chef's kiss. Just mm, such a good outdoor space. So definitely a lot of people like to come out here in the spring and in the summer to hang out. And like I said, it is uh, still early in the day. It's only about 1230 right now. So it's not as crowded as it might be uh, other times if... I had come on a Saturday and there was a four o'clock start, four o'clock game, then I would expect the salt line would probably be packed. Dacha would probably be packed. That's just kind of how these places get on the weekend. So past salt line is 
All Purpose, which is a Neapolitan style pizza. And I am a huge pizza fan, and we have lots of different pizza options in DC. So Emmy Squared is excellent for Detroit style. If you want Neapolitan style, All Purpose is excellent for that. Very different styles. Neapolitan is uh, smaller, cooked at a higher temperature. It's usually got fresh uh, mozzarella and uh, other fresh ingredients on it. So very good uh, there. Um, this is a vacant spot here on the right. Looking forward to seeing what uh, goes in there. It's been empty for quite a while now and um, not quite sure what's going to go there. But finally, uh, one of the last spots up here is the Solace Outpost. So it's called the Outpost because it's part of the Solace Brewing Company, another brewery, and I believe they're based in Virginia. So they don't brew here, or at least they don't brew much here uh, at the Outpost, but it is the Outpost because if you come here, they will sell you their beers. Uh, there's a little, little sign, little logo. They have a cool happy hour. They have a great outdoor space. I have been here, sat outside, during happy hour before a game, enjoyed some beers. It is definitely a great spot. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping up because we've made it pretty much through the neighborhood. And I am curious if you made it to the end, if you've been to this neighborhood before and specifically what you, year you were here because we probably passed a few dozen spots on the walk. And when I first started attending Nationals games, Nationals Park opened in 2008. And for the first several seasons after it opened in 2008, there was the bullpen and there was one other spot in the neighborhood, Justin's Cafe, which doesn't even exist anymore. And so to see all these places, all these options that are here now, in many ways is just amazing to me. So I'm curious if you've been to this area before, what did you think? If you like this style of video, let me know if you wanna see more of these walking tours of neighborhoods and where you want me to go. And in the meantime, maybe you'll like to watch my walking tour around the National Mall at midnight. So check that out next.